So I am working now on ARM as an assembly language. Uh, in the previous videos, we did MIPS. Uh, and I like ARM, especially uh, version 7, even though it's not the most modern. Uh, ARM v8 is now much more common. Uh, but I like ARM v7 because it's clever. There's a lot of really interesting, clever things uh, that the developers of ARM v7 did. And as we go through this series, you'll see some of those interesting design decisions. And I think it's really informative, especially for those of us who are doing design, uh, to look at the kind of design decisions they made in this constrained space of building an assembly language that can fit in 32 bits and still do lots of really interesting things. So that's why I like ARM v7. Um, it is... Uh, ARM as an assembly language now is pretty common in uh, a lot of phones and game design or uh, game systems. Um, and again, like V8 is a much more, um, I don't know, boring <laughs> system. It feels to me a lot like the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 thing. PlayStation 3, the architecture was uh, cell architecture. And maybe I'll do a series on that later on. Uh, very clever, very interesting use of new technologies. PlayStation 4 is a boring, vanilla GPU-CPU combo, um, and it works, right? It's, it's, it's popular because it works, but in terms of design and like clever solutions to difficult problems, it's a little dull. Uh, and I'm more interested in the design stuff than the actual, like, what actually works. Um, so that's why ARM v7. So uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, so like... MIPS, ARM is a reduced instruction set machine, which is in contrast again to x86 and other places like that, which are complex instruction set machines. So the two different philosophies, um, reduced instruction set says try to make things simple and fast, and then if you have to do things a few more times to get stuff done, that's fine because everything is simple and fast. Uh, complex instruction machines um, means you have a single uh, instruction for every complex task. You have an instruction to do really complicated things, but that means the instructions themselves have to be a little slower and more complicated, and you need more hardware to do things. So uh, reduced instruction set means simplify the hardware, simplify the processing, and make everything really, really fast. Uh, pipelining is easier with reduced instruction set computers because everything it looks the same. Um, you can get clock speeds faster. There's a lot of uh, big advantages. Uh, the disadvantage is, uh, is common tasks can take longer because you have to do three or four instructions to complete the common task instead of a single instruction for complex instruction set machines. So reduced instruction set machines. It's a load store architecture, which means you're never going to operate on memory. You're going to bring material in from memory, you're going to operate on it, and then you're going to put it back into memory. Um, this is the way things are done these days because memory in terms of speed has not kept up with um, processing speed. And so we have multiple layers of cache between the processor and actual RAM. Uh, and what that means is that we always have to bring stuff in from memory before we operate it on it. Oftentimes we'll operate on something and then um, somebody else might also operate it on it at the same time because we have multi-processing systems and because we bring copies in from memory. All of this means uh, there's a lot of complexity when it comes to caching and synth uh, synchronization of cache. That's another topic later in this video series. Um, but essentially that comes from two aspects, load star architectures and the fact that memory speeds have not kept up with processing speeds. So MIPS is like that, ARM is like that. But uh, again, some of the really clever things about ARM, especially V7, is that every instruction is conditional. Uh, this is a really, really cool feature, which we'll get into in some detail later on. What it means is you don't have to have branches a lot of the time. I mean, you're still going to have branches, you're still going to have decisions, you're still going to have to do branch prediction and a bunch of other stuff. But for really simple things, where if you do a single operation based on a single decision, that can happen in one instruction, right? Add two numbers together, but only if the result of the previous addition was negative. That can happen in a single instruction. No branching, no nothing. It just goes to the pipeline it's really, really cool. Um, there's an inline barrel shifter. So almost any instruction can include a shift. Uh, and when we get into discussions of the, uh, of the assembly language itself, you'll see that every instruction has a conditional. Uh, every instruction, the, um, which one is it here? One of these operands, uh, every instruction for the second operand can include a shift. Uh, and so I'll go through this, this sheet a little later on. This is my version of the sheet. Um, for ARM v7 that I built when I was at the University of Regina. And it, uh, I like it better because I built it, but also because it puts on one piece of paper the encoding information, which is the real constraint for this kind of stuff. 
uh, when you're trying to build an assembly language that's got to fit in uh, 32 bits. What matters is what each bit does. And so what this sheet does is for every bit from 31 down to 0, what each bit does and how that affects what is available to you in the assembly language itself. So all instructions are conditional. All instructions can include a shift. And there's a really cool and powerful auto-indexed memory address, uh, which means um, essentially for every memory access, you can also change the access point. So you have a pointer to a memory a uh, address uh, for an array. In the same instruction, you access that, you also point to the next element in the array, all in one instruction. Again, super clever, complicated, right? Here's the, um, where did it go? Uh, this is the, the stuff, stuff for loads and stores. You've got multiple versions of loads and stores, pre-indexed and post-indexed auto-updating, lots of real complexity here, and, and really messy too, uh, which we'll see when we get there. Uh, but very powerful and interesting. So it, it, it brings in aspects of complex instruction set, which is complicated and messy things, um, but it can do them in a single instruction, which can go through the pipeline just like everything else, which makes it a reduced instruction set machine. So this is the sort of basis and overview of what ARM can do. Uh, really interesting stuff. Now, I'm going to do a quick overview first, and then we're going to go into some detail about each individual aspect. Um, the, the book I'm referring to is the Clemens book, um, Alan Clemens Architecture. What the heck is it called? Uh, it's over there. Contemporary, uh, no, sorry, Computer Organization and Architecture by Clemens. Um, if you want to read along, that's the book I'm using. Um, and these are, again, these notes are based on when I taught this at the University of Regina. But uh, there are labs that, that teach you this stuff as well. And I might build some of this stuff into this video series, depending on what you like. If you like it, let me know, and I'll build in the labs later on. So that's the basic introduction. Um, in the next video, I will talk about the uh, programmer model, which includes the register file um, and all of the pointers and how they're all constructed.